the Stevens Point Police and Fire Commission. Welcome to all. Uh, would you please call the roll? Carlson? Here. Kirschling? Here. Moore? Here. Ostrowski? Here. Westcott? Here. Okay, item two. Anyone here who wishes to address the commission, who wishes to be heard, or have any announcement they wish to pass along? If so, please stand and identify yourself. Are we all spectators? I'm really disappointed in that. All right, we'll move to item three. Um, we're going to defer action on the minutes. I'm going to get back to that. So if you would take the minutes out of your packet, uh, commissioners, and just be so kind as to set them aside, that would be great. Yeah, just set them aside for a second. Uh, we'll have to come back to those. I, I, I want to refer. Part of five, I want to talk about uh, the minutes, okay? okay? So with that said, let's move to item four, the confirmation of the bills. Commissioner Ostrowski, you have reviewed the bills from the police department and fire department. Uh, so you get to go first. Okay. Uh, looking them over, nothing unusual jumps out. Uh, and I would again like to commend the, in looking at the budgetary version, uh, to both departments. While we are over on some, we're under on others, and as a result, the budgets themselves are in very good shape going into the last quarter. And uh, I do not have anything on the item that needs an explanation. If you have a question on something, please sing out. Otherwise, I would move for their approval. Second. Okay, motion from Commissioner Strusky, seconded by Commissioner Moore. Are there any questions from any commissioners on the bills? Okay, all in favor of approving the bills as presented to the Police and Fire Commission, please say aye. Aye. I will say no. Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioners. Item number five um, is uh, the City Attorney is going to discuss with us, uh, well, the agenda item is self-explanatory, but what it springs from is last month, Commissioners, just to refresh your memory, you heard a comprehensive uh, report of a thorough investigation that our fire chief conducted uh, on behalf of, who was the complainant? I got an email, two comes in for me, an email from right. the well, director we, involving a well, picture of an ambulance. Yeah, I'm not going to revisit that entire comprehensive report, but at the end of that discussion there is, in my judgment, uh, some ambiguity as to the direction uh, this commission wished to proceed. Uh, if you look at the minutes on the back of page two, uh, you'll see at this point the chief asked the commission to file a formal complaint with the county executive that the request for the investigation, uh, which he conducted and reported to us in depth last month, uh, was an attempt to embarrass the men and women of the fire department. Now here's where it gets a little vague. Uh, there is quite a bit of discussion about filing a formal complaint. There was some discussion from some commissioners about uh, what is the status of a letter that is being written to the county executive on a couple of matters. Uh, I think Commissioner Carlson, if your memories are better, correct me, uh, Commissioner Carlson said, well, what do we say we send the letter and then request a meeting, then there was some, well, what if we have a meeting before the letter? So here's the bottom line after a lot of discussion. We have reviewed the tape uh, and it was a, to be fair, it isn't really clear on the tape either. So, in conversation with the city attorney, from my previous life, um, I know that when you file a formal complaint against a government official, that's a very serious act. Uh, so I asked for the city attorney to weigh in on this uh, and provide some thinking uh, and perhaps some guidance to the commission as to what a logical next step may be uh, and I want you all to think in terms of, of the comprehensive report we heard from the fire chief last month, uh, the 50 hours plus of his time to conduct that investigation, uh, and the manpower that was involved, and then the conclusions uh, that were arrived at. So with that, where is our city attorney back there today? Okay. Logan, do you want to come up front here? Or are you come sure. up How, how far up front? <laughs> Even well, the power point of view? Uh, no. So, uh, what did I leave anything out? Did I think we've got a good summary of where we are today? Sure, and I can certainly take it from there. So, um, as Gary said, this is something that we discussed over the last uh, week or two, just with regards to what the intent was and what sort of actual action would, would come from that. So, I think uh, to just discuss the word complaint momentarily, 
most people, they think of the word complaint and they think of just an indication of displeasure about something. Uh, whereas, you know, us in the legal field, we think of it as more a document that will initiate some sort of process that necessarily has to flow from that. Um, so with that in mind, uh, you know, we had an indication to file a formal complaint. So I reviewed uh, the Portage County ordinances that uh, would relate to that because something that you wanted to file with the county executive. Looking for is there any sort of procedure for citizens or any type of other person to, to do that. And I really didn't come up with anything in terms of the county executive. What there is, they, they have, much like this body has regulations for conduct of uh, the, the staff that it oversees, the uh, regular, you know, the, the mayoral city government, so to speak, has administrative policies regarding conduct of its employees. And uh, there can be uh, disciplinary actions under that, but they, they can be initiated upon information that's received from third parties, i.e. from you to the county executive or somebody to the mayor, etc. cetera. Uh, but, but it's not really a formal complaint process. Now what there is uh, within the Portage County ordinances is an ethical code as well. Code of Ethics for Portage County Public Officials and Employees. Uh, that's uh, chapter three, section six. And within that, there is an actual uh, complaint procedure for any person to file a complaint. So it says anyone desiring to report an alleged violation of this code shall submit a verified complaint to the Office of Corporation Counsel. The verified complaint shall consist of sworn charges alleging personal knowledge of violation of the Code of Ethics. Corporation Counsel, or in his absence, either the Deputy or Assistant Corporation Counsel, shall forward the complaint to the Ethics Committee for investigation. Uh, form will be made available for this purpose. So. There's the formal part. Uh, the complaint must be filed within two years of the date of the occurrence of the or occurrences alleged to constitute a violation of the code of ethics. In the event that a verified complaint is filed involving, oh, okay. and then the ethics committee uh, would review that, and there's a process that, that flows from there. So obviously a very formalized process that once you get that ball rolling via the complaint, has to be carried out according to the procedure that's contained in the ordinance. Now. Uh, based upon sort of just my impression of the discussion that led up to the motion, I'm not sure that's exactly what you were looking for. However, what I wanted to do was just sort of break down uh, kind of a timeline of, of events and things that, that various staff members have reported and perceived that, that play into what could go into something like that or potentially go into a different type of document just written communication to the county executive detailing your position and, and concerns. So I think if we, this go back, goes back about 10 months, and I think really what it starts off with is at an EMS oversight committee meeting uh, back around December, January, um, the current medical director for, Port, or for Stevens Point EMS, uh, Sarah Brandt, uh, said to the committee that, the, that a, a, a one in one system, a one paramedic, one EMT system, uh, would be workable in Plover, and she didn't really anticipate there being any issues with it. Um, there was some discussion of rapid sequence intubation as being one procedure that is you have to have two paramedics for, and that that doesn't that that's not required very often. Well, obviously we have a two paramedic system for Stevens Point EMS here, so you know management perceived that as being uh, a little contrary to you know the structure of our system being said publicly coming from our own medical director. So in April 13th, uh, the chiefs met with uh, directors at, at Ascension, uh, Dr. Andrews and Dr. Uh, Watson, and they expressed concern about those, about those statements, saying, you know, essentially, we can disagree all we want behind closed doors, but really we feel like we need public support for the structure of our system that we have from, from our medical director that we work with. So, that was, that was the way that conversation went. It was about a professional concern about communications related to the structure of, the, of our department. So then later on, uh, May 15th, there was a text message received by a staff member that from Emergency Management Director Joe Brandt saying, I don't know if you knew, but SPFD fired Sarah as medical director today. 
that didn't happen. We don't have the authority to do that, by the way. I mean, the Ascension staff, she's an employee of, of theirs, uh, but to my knowledge, she still carries on as the medical director today. Right? Well, you made a very important point. The Police and Fire Commission, although it is an optional powers commission, which enjoys, as the city attorney knows, uh, tremendous legal latitude under the statutes, would not have the authority to dismiss a doctor from his position. I think that's a key point, commissioners, I want you to remember. Please continue, Councilman. So obviously, nobody was fired. Like, like the chief just indicated, she continues on as the medical director for Stevens Point EMS. So it was really just the staff expressing concerns about these, pub these public statements about the system, the, the EMS system, and the staffing of it. <clears throat> so just three days after that, uh, May 18th, uh, both Dr. Brandt and, uh, and Emergency Management Director Joe Brandt made uh, reports to the EMS Oversight Committee. And during that, uh, Joe Brandt referred to three complaints against Stevens Point EMS. Didn't elaborate on what they were, uh, but obviously that was something that was of great concern to, to the chiefs. They asked for copies of those complaints and were refused. Um, it wasn't until I sent a letter to uh, Corporation Council in July essentially saying, you know, we're entitled to these under open records law, that we finally were given them. And we found out that they were not necessarily complaints, they were patient satisfaction surveys. Uh, one of them had low marks with no explanation. One was a complaint about the cost of services. Which we have no control over. And one was uh, some low marks along with some, uh, some comments regarding an impression of the staff's attitude towards uh, towards uh, the, the, the situation. If, if you could pause just again, I just want to stress a key point as we walk down this path again, because we've been on it now for about 10 months. There was an investigation. I mean, we appreciate legal counsel quickly going through that, but it was a time-consuming process for the city attorney. We were grateful for the county's corporation counsel providing that information to the police and fire commission so that we could review and our discovery indicated quite clearly these were not complaints as we view them under the law but patient satisfaction surveys uh, that every patient well not every patient but many of the patients uh, who are transported would receive customarily so thank you Councilor. Right. specifically the minutes from that may 18th meeting uh, it says emergency management directors report um, and it says two to three patient complaints which cannot be resolved due to restrictions. So again, we did make a request for those complaints and it took us several months to get any information about that. It also said medical director's report, and I'm quoting from the actual minutes here. It says, Chief Bob Finn from SPFD has gone to Ascension Healthcare leadership requesting a new medical director. Ascension Healthcare is reviewing the request. Dr. Brandt will continue as the medical director for Amherst Ambulance. Dr. Brandt will continue as medical director for the entire system until a replacement is found. So that, that was in May, and, uh, and uh, as I referred to uh, uh, later on in July, we did get the information about those, about those uh, complaints that were referred to, so to speak. The patient satisfaction surveys? The patient satisfaction surveys. Okay. So on July 18th, uh, fire department staff met with uh, Dr. Andrews. Uh, they discussed the status of an MOU um, and expressed some di uh, some displeasure about the medical director, saying that that the chief was trying to get her fired. That was not the intention. That's not what was discussed. It was we're concerned about these remarks. We need to know that we have backing from our medical director with regards to the way we're structuring our system. <coughs> And then uh, two days later, in uh, July 20th, there was another emergency management, uh, or excuse me, another EMS oversight meeting, or committee meeting. And uh, in it, D uh, Director Joe Brandt stated that the EMS office supports the county adopting a relationship with Ascension to provide a medical director for the county and require those doing business in the county under contract to utilize that medical director regardless of who it is. So that's really the point that, that I wanted to get to me is that position is currently held by the emergency management director's wife. The county ethical policy states that
among other things, certainly. <laughs> Conflict of interest prohibited, except as otherwise provided in subsection 2, no employee, employee or local or public official may take any official action affecting a matter in which the employee or official, a member of his or her immediate family, or an organization with which the employee or official is associated has a substantial financial interest. So at first glance, it certainly looks like this could fall under. And obviously, you heard the, the report from the chief last month about the incident involving the, the ambulance and the alleged water damage, which seems to have been based entirely upon one photograph that clearly showed a different ambulance. Um, and and as, as Chief Finn indicated, that took quite a lot of time for him to investigate on his part. Uh, and he also stated that, he, that at this point, it's, they perceive some of these uh, efforts on the part of the emergency management director to be, uh, if not in intent, certainly in effect, just embarrassing to the department and, and sort of unnecessary. So with all that said, uh, what I would be asking for is some clear direction about what you want to do with that information. Now, like I said, there's an official uh, verified complaint procedure that can, that can be undertaken, but then there's also the option of just putting this in communication, sending it to uh, the county executive, and essentially saying, here is some concerns we have, and, and leaving it up to the county staff and, uh, and county electeds to determine what, uh, if anything, to do with that information. And if I'm not mistaken, that is a, a correspondence that you have started drafting uh, in light of a conversation uh, concerning the, the three non-complaints. And so that, that process is somewhat already, you know, in, in progress. Commissioners, I will pause. Uh, what questions would you have for the city attorney? Uh, chief wants to speak. Oh, chief, I'm sorry. Mr. Westcott, uh, just so the commission knows that this investigation of the ambulance in the water was on the public safety agenda. Okay. Uh, chief Gemza attended that meeting. That's a county committee? Yes, public safety, yes. Okay, all right. Uh, it was on the agenda. He had another meeting. Uh, they went past that agenda item. It was not talked about. He left the meeting and came back. Chairman Dobratz then called Chief Gemza after the public safety meeting, after Chief Gemza got back from his meeting, to apologize because Director Brandt did bring it up once Chief Gemza left the meeting. And I'm not going to speak for Chief Gemza, but is that <coughs> pretty much how it happened? Um, Chief Gemza? Is that you know, yeah, that, uh, that, uh, Director... Uh, Joseph, would you stand? Speak Chairman Dobrats called me uh, at about 8 o'clock on uh, Wednesday morning to apologize for that item being brought up um, out of out of order, and um, and was, he thought I was at the meeting. I explained to him that I waited till I think two or three items afterwards, um, and then I had a prior meeting at, at 7:30, so I had to leave, uh, not expecting that item to be brought up having noticed it in the packet that the ambulance um, picture was in there and it was never brought up. So I left the meeting, obviously, thinking that the meet that wasn't going to be brought up. All right, two quick questions. What was the date of that meeting again? That, I don't know, it would have been last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. Right, so last that's Wednesday. well after the time the commission had concluded its investigation and had ruled the picture in question was erroneous. That is correct. But it was still distributed to elected officials of the county. I don't believe the picture was. The topic was brought. It was on the the topic of status of ambulance. Mm -hmm. And right. it was brought up that it was still undetermined what ambulance was driven through high waters, which clearly had been an investigation. And I, I believe that conclusion had been reached early in September. You are correct. And okay. the county officials had been notified prior to. So they had the accurate information from this investigation. That is correct. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Mayor, you asked for the floor? Uh, just for clarification, <clears throat> because I wasn't at the meeting, this uh, is just like any other public agenda. We have to do things in the order they're listed unless you have consent of the body. It's my understanding that this agenda item was early on. It was skipped over. And uh, my question, I guess, would be then for Assistant Chief Gemza, 
Was there any discussion about postponing that and coming back to it later? Was there any consent from the body prior to that uh, to allow the the sequence to be altered? Chief? No, there was there was no discussion about that. It had just moved on, and there was that is why I left because my assumption was that it wasn't going to be discussed. Well, the second question I had before I go back to maybe Chief Finn. Uh, after you had left and Chairperson Dobrotz contacted you, did they have a discussion and arrive at some conclusion of their own that we should be aware of? Not that I am aware of. He, he uh, just said it, right. was just, it was just briefly discussed. And okay. All right. Did you want anything else? Could, could I ask why did Chairman Dobrotz contact you? Just, just to bring that about that specific item. For that specific item, and to apologize for bringing it up, because he was going to ask me a question, and when he realized that I wasn't there, he, he apologized. Okay. All right. Commissioners, uh, let me bring it back. Uh, questions you would have for the city attorney based on his uh, uh, presentation here this evening? Just curious, Logan. Do you have any recommendations, or would you like to see it go one way or the other? Well, I guess my view of it is that uh, this is a county employee, and it's the county's ethical code that they've adopted. And I think uh, certainly the courteous thing to do would be to just bring the, the information to their attention and allow them to determine how best to address it. Would the best venue to do that would be through the letter that you and I have discussed where we talk about the... Uh, the investigation into the ambulance and not in flood water, the investigation that took some time into three complaints that were not complaints, uh, and then ask for them to be being aware of it, ask for their time. How would you like to conclude that? Uh, well, I think, I cer certainly I think a motion could be in order for uh, myself and the chair to uh, compile a letter that details the facts that I've described here today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Commissioners, thoughts? Robert? For, my, for myself, I think that is the logical step that I would like to see take place because the formal complaint to me is a step to no return. I mean, uh, we've, we've gone down the road completely and, we've, and I would like to see us take one more step <coughs> to settle this thing and get it cleared up. And I think yourself and the county exec with a letter like that, I think can maybe go a long way to solving this thing and getting it straightened out before we enter the legal category that we can't back out. Could that letter Commissioner? result in a meeting with the parties involved to sit down at a table and actually talk face to face? I, I, th I, I think that would be an excellent I, yeah. I think that would be an that's excellent that's idea to offer that. You were yeah. you were talking about that the last meeting. Did you yeah. ever work on that? No, I, I didn't work on it because we were just no. waiting to, to see. But that's what I'd like to see is, is, a, is a letter sent, hopefully which would spur a meeting, to have some open, honest dialogue uh, to resolve the issues that obviously are there and to work forward uh, to make this whole system even better. All right. Uh, Commissioner Moore, Commissioner Kirschman, thoughts? My only thought is, if we do do a letter, then these things continue to happen, and a formal complaint needs to happen. If, we, if we can't come to some resolution. All right. Alderman, uh, Commissioner? <laughs> you got an alderman yeah. going. Sorry. I, I would have to agree with Joe. I think there has to be a definite result from this. We can't just leave it hang out there. We need to do as the chief said, and stick up for our employees more than anything else because they're the ones that are getting a black eye from this and they certainly have not earned it. Oh, without a doubt. But I, but I think we have that in your pocket to bring out the heavy stick. But I don't think we use our elephant bullets right away. I'd much rather try to resolve it the easiest way possible and that's with people talking to people trying to work to make the entire county better and just the everyday day-to-day -day relationships uh, but to bring out the heavy stick right away I'd like to keep that in my pocket till I needed it would there be others that to, and I guess this is also a question for the city attorney other than the county executive 
Uh, is there anyone else that should receive this letter at the time? Uh, I think uh, I think the prior correspondence that we've sent in connection to EMS issues has uh, likely been copied to the chair of the EMS Oversight Committee. That would be my recommendation that it goes to the chair of the EMS Oversight too. Uh, commissioners, uh, I, I serve, yes, Mr. Mayor? I, I would recommend that you do the chairman of the county board as well. Okay. I want a copy of that. That's still Phil? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, commissioners, I, I certainly would support, I think it's important that we reiterate a couple of things. We have spent a lot of time on this as a commission. Uh, our fire chief, our assistant fire chief, uh, we sit here and in the course of a half hour, roughly roll through 10 months. Uh, there has been a tremendous amount of staff time, professional review time, uh, the investigation into the ambulance in high water that was not in high water was over 50 hours, uh, the repeated allegations uh, at a public committee of complaints. Well, the word complaint to me is a very serious word. It's a lot different than a patient satisfaction survey that most patients receive. That's a big difference. Uh, and I think in the interest of you know, proving once again, showing, demonstrating once again, that <clears throat> this commission takes its role seriously, uh, we provide absolutely the best paramedic service in the state of Wisconsin. And I have worked here, and I've worked in Madison, and I know exactly what Madison officials think of this service. Uh, but I'm always willing to take the, the high ground and say, let's send a letter. Let's stress in that letter that this was an extensive investigation. The conclusions that we arrived at officially as a commission, these are official findings. The, the findings that were arrived at following the complaints, alleged complaints, and to show some appreciation to the county for eventually providing us with these patient satisfaction surveys. Uh, and to demonstrate once again that as your ambulance service provider for the county, uh, we're willing to sit down and talk about it. Uh, I, I kind of enjoyed your thought on the elephant bullet, Ron. But I, don't think, I don't think based on everything I know and based on everything I've heard from legal counsel and from this commission, uh, Maybe that's the next step, but I would be more than willing to go into a meeting with a complete open mind and say, we have identified repeated areas of concern. This is an optional powers commission. We have spent a lot of time investigating, reviewing. Uh, we find the findings of our fire chief to be credible, uh, to be factual, uh, and we have absolutely all the grounds in my judgment to proceed with this letter as our first step. So, hey, go ahead. I'm sorry, I was just going to say, and I'm going back to 1978, this isn't how the city of Stevens Point and Portage County work together. The relationship has always been a strong one, and I'd like to get that relationship back between the fire department, emergency management, sheriff's department, city PD, whatever. This, this county is 70,000 people, not 700,000 people. We should work together in this community, in this county, to make it a better one. And I think we have to get back to that, working together, not opposite sides of the street. And that's my two cents. I just want well, to... Well, you know, Ron, Commissioner Carlson, I think that's an important point. As I look around the room here, when we created the paramedic program in 1999, only one or two of you were around. But it was a true collaborative partnership between Portage County you might have been there. You might have been like a young patrol officer at that time for the sheriff's department. And good looking. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to say it. You're still good looking. Always. <laughs> but Always. It, it, it really demonstrated to the state of Wisconsin what a powerful, let me stress that, a powerful collaborative effort this was for the county and the city to jointly unveil it, to jointly work together. Uh, and it, that was. 1999. It's not that long ago. Uh, and it has proven to be a tremendous success. So I'm willing to take the high ground. I'm willing to say, Counselor, would you, if we get a motion from a commissioner, uh, draft that letter. Uh, I will be happy to sign it. 
YouTube and send it to the uh, individuals that have been uh, recommended to us, the county executive, uh, the chairperson of the EMS oversight, uh, and the mayor has recommended that we include uh, the county board chairman. I think that's a good, a good recommendation. So, commissioners, unless you have further discussion, the chair will entertain a motion to... I have a question. Uh, yes, sir. Who's going to take the lead on setting up the meeting? Well, that'll be in our letter. Okay. Uh, and I'll offer to do that. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm at the university. I got nothing but time. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Go on. Chief, did you want to add anything? No, sir. All right. All right. Uh, Chair, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to write that letter. I'll second it. Right, is there further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Both say no. Motion carries. Okay, with that, uh, commissioners, um, let's go back if, with your blessing to the approval of the minutes. I think, unless you're uncomfortable, I'm okay approving the minutes because uh, we have clarified item two and we can adopt these minutes and reflect in the minutes of this meeting uh, how we handle this. Does that make sense? So moved and stated. Thank you. Well, whatever item it is. <laughs> three. Item item three. Okay. okay. All right. Are we clear on the motion? Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. All say no. Motion carries. You're right. It's item three. All right. Bills we've done. Item six, fire chief's report and the EMS report. Robert, you're up. Handed out the EMS report and <coughs> the fire chief's report. I thought it was done, and it wasn't, and you will get two next month. That's my fault, and I'm working today on stuff for the city attorney, and then I just never got around to it. My apologies, I thought it was done. <laughs> you need to keep after you. I, don't, don't let him off the block. I, I, I would off. like to say that <laughs> we are selling the pink t-shirts <laughs> with the profits for breast cancer. It's going to St. Michael's uh, Breast Cancer Center. Uh, that's a charity that the union, Local 44, is done. Okay. And uh, also that on October 11th, uh, we have about 15 members of the fire department going to attend PTSD uh, training, <coughs> suicide prevention for first responders. Being held there in the city at Stevens Point. Good. If uh, the commissioners, there's two sessions, uh, PTSD and suicide prevention amongst first responders and compassion fatigue, it's free. You're more than welcome to stop out. They're from 8 to 12 and 1 to 5 are the sessions at the Holiday Inn. Uh, a press release is going to go out this week from the Suicide Prevention Coalition and writing the press. Okay. So, uh, and so I think it would be nice if someone from the Police and Fire Commission can go so you guys understand what the Chief Skip and myself and our guys, our guys go through every day mm -hmm. what they got to bring home. Uh, I thought some of the police training below the 100 opened the eyes of, of some of the city elders. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Chief Skip, any police officers on? Yes, I know they are. But I don't oh, know okay. <laughs> I will take the Chief's word for that. Okay. Yes, there are. <laughs> All right, we don't have a, a chief's report, but I'll move approval of the EMS report as submitted. Second. Second by Commissioner Carlson. Question, count. All in favor of adopting as submitted, please say aye. 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 Both say no. Motion carries. Uh, chief, we'll roll right to you. Seven is create a part-time supported employment position. You're up. Uh, myself and Chief Gums were approached sometime early this year to create a part-time position. Uh, along from Opportunity Development Centers in uh, Park Ridge. Okay. And until they found a candidate, we really couldn't do anything. Now they have a candidate. Uh, I talked to uh, representatives from the Opportunity Development Center, uh, Lisa Yakus, our HR, and Corey Laddick. We do have it in the fire department budget. Um, if the Police and Fire Commission approve this in the City Council, we will sit down and come up with a job description. This person basically it's four hours a day, four days a week, three days at station one, one day at station two. And it'll be with white house cleaning, you know, shredding documents or cleaning offices or preparing stuff. chiefs reports. 
prepared chase reports. <laughs> Good singer. <laughs> what, I'm sorry, what's the your memo time? That, the what's memo your? that uh, is going before the mayor is going to present before the city council is attached in your packet. I right. did have the memo done. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, if there's any questions. Chief, where is the Opportunity Development Center? I've been out of touch. I'm just curious. Where is Park that? Ridge? What is it? It's in Park Ridge. Oh, uh, Park Ridge Drive. Yeah. It um, helps. Uh, Got it, Mayor. <laughs> I've actually worked with the group, uh, and we've, we've tried to do a, a few other projects throughout the city. So, what it is is ODC works with um, people with different abilities. Uh, some physical challenges, mental challenges, and they try and pair them up with a, a job that, that allows them to have a rewarding, fulfilling job, something to do um, that <clears throat> fits their personality <clears throat> or their abilities to try and uh, match them up <coughs> as an employer. Century, uh, I know, participates in the program. As a matter of fact, we attended a, a recognition for them, uh, I think it was in spring and uh, several of the participants were graduating. Uh, this, is, this is a great program to allow people to still have a fulfilling and rewarding job. Is it right across the street from the start? Kind of. Uh, sort of, kind of. Yeah, 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 that's okay. what I thought. Okay, I, I'm with For you those now. of us old timers. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. I think it's a grand idea and I'll move approval. Second. Gotcha. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Please say no, motion carries. Item 8, the long-awaited update on the police department's relocation to Mid-State. Uh, Chief Skibble, you have the floor. So, commissioners, as you are all aware, uh, with the council's blessing and funding, uh, we are on our way to relocate to a location that's going to better serve our community. With that said, there's clearly, again, some basic things we need to do. Connectivity, security, and those things are currently being worked on. We still believe we are going to be able to move all of the department prior to January 1. Uh, we're working with a lot of different vendors to address those issues. And so we are hopeful, and again, as you saw, some of the donations that came through here last month mm -hmm. are going to accelerate that, whether it's cubicles and, and space needs. And so we are looking forward to that. We've also reached out to the Boys and Girls Club, had a conversation with them again working with our neighbors and having that conversation about how whether we can engage with them or they can be involved with what we do for a living and taking care of our community just to again meet their needs uh, engage better and so currently that's where we're at it's kind of that one step slow pull push uh, but we are getting there and a, a lot of basic work has been done already Again, the donations have really accelerated some of that. Uh, we're leaning heavily on the city IT, and I, I guess I can't uh, say it loud enough about how much they are really stretching and doing for us um, to get our connectivity set up and, and moving forwards. Um, you, you said you're going to be in there by January? Uh, I would say <laughs> something or high water, but in Wisconsin it snows. So, uh, but yes, I, either way, and, and just so you're all aware, uh, Portage County is redoing the ramp where we're currently located. Within a week or two, that's going to be broken up, creating more issues in the parking. So clearly, it's evident we're in a congested environment. We need to relocate, and we may do it in segments where patrol and the investigation bureau is relocated, and our window interview rooms, administrative offices, myself as an example and records mm -hmm. would still remain in our current environment until December 31, if if need be. Commissioner? Chief, is this then going to be done in phases? It isn't going to be like on Friday you're downtown and on Monday you're uh, totally on Michigan Avenue. This is a phase in departments will move some of the time? My love or hope would be Friday come Monday, mm -hmm. we have a new address. Mm -hmm. However, as we all know, government <coughs> and business do not always work that way. Uh, but definitely the biggest thing we would be doing is communicating with our community where we are at. And so long as we maintain our records bureau administrative staff, everything is still at 1515 strongs. Okay. 
my that's the only thing for you. I'm Go sorry, ahead, Robert. Robert. My other question for you would be that lot has an incredible number of cars parked on it daily. Are those cars that are there by themselves or are those cars part of a you know, boys club, girls club, what is it? Sometimes that lot is just about filled. I've been monitoring we, this. We have an agreement with ministry that during their construction, um, via this written agreement, they're able to have some of their employees park there due to the overflow. Because there's, there's that lot is just about full. Mr. Mayor? And I, and I want to point out, too, that that agreement expires at the end of October. Okay. The chief has already been in contact with members of Ascension St. Michael's and worked mm -hmm. out a parking <laughs> agreement that can be extended. My intention is that the chief is going to have those documents ready for council consideration at the October meeting in two weeks. Okay. Other questions on the roof? Good luck. Um, I don't think I'm, I'm sorry. Looking. The only thing I would say individually, as commissioners, by all means, uh, feel free to contact my office so we can give you a tour. We'd love to show you and discuss the pluses and what we're going to be able to do for our community relocating. That's all. Thank I you. think in the very near future, as part of your communication plan, when you say, hi, this is where your police department is now located, you're going to have to cover some very obvious things. Here's the door the public should use to walk in. <coughs> Uh, what happens after hours? And right now, after hours, uh, at the courthouse, there's a phone that links uh, to the central dispatch. Is that still going to be an option? Will that phone exist over there? And those are the kind of things I know you're thinking about. Uh, I know you're being, you know, as to basically, because we're not going to be staffed over the 24 I don't think we're going to be staffed over the 24 7 um, Well, there is a staffing request. No. Uh, well, we are going to I'm going to go there in a minute. Um, and I would imagine by the time we get there, the security, if the necessary security upgrades will have been accomplished? That is correct. Okay. All right. Uh, other question? Because we, well, this is going to be a monthly item through yeah. January, and then we'll stop because it'll be totally moved by then. All right. Thank you, Chief. Why don't we just move to your report, which is item nine. Thank you for the update. Uh, the police chief report, commissioners, is uh, contained in your packet. Chief, you have the floor. <laughs> The only thing I do want to speak about, and a, a bit of a hiccup, uh, you'll notice under September, mm -hmm. where we have the involved incidents and gun related. I, I apologize. Uh, many of these we are doing manually. We do have a. Unfortunately, with technology, sometimes um, you run into how things are identified. And, and so, with our current records management system, we do have trouble pulling these details out. We used to do, as Commissioner Carlson would attest, we used to code many things. And from an administrative perspective, that's great. From the begin user, uh, dispatch and whatnot, that is difficult. And so regarding our weapon involved in gun calls, that's a manual, similarly our mental health. And so had a little hiccup about documenting that uh, on paper this month. But actually, we did have nine weapon calls and two gun-related. Uh, one of the gun-related was a suicide by cop attempt. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, again, speaking to the value of our training, uh, that did not occur, which I was, again, very thankful for what the community invests in our training. Uh, with that said, again, a lot of events going on this time of the year are auxiliary this time of the year, we're almost at a thousand hours already, 76 events. Mm -hmm. um, they are doing phenomenal reaching out. Uh, we will have some further discussion as it gets closer, but uh, Captain Ray Pataki at the end of the year is going to be retiring. Um, at 80 plus, I must confess, <laughs> I hope I'm even remotely close to that person's energy and compassion and love for the community. I can't believe he's retiring. And I think he's getting smart enough to go, you know what, I need time for my family. Um, so, but again, we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit as that gets, but this time of the year, really busy, and, and as this points out, we are, our men and women of our department are doing phenomenal, um, and as Chief Finn talked about this month, uh, cancer awareness is huge, domestic violence, and, and just trying to educate and make aware um, obviously pink for cancer, purple for domestic violence, which we had a presentation at the courthouse the other day, but part of our jobs, Chief Finn's and mine, 
is education as well. It's not just the responding, it's the proactive and 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 that would be it. Thank you. Commissioner. Chief, uh, on the, the emergency detentions, there's a timeline behind it. Does that uh, indicate the times these things happen? Th that was one of those caveats that I wrestled with, but as an informational yes, even though we talk about only four emergency detentions, again, as Commissioner Carlson can attest from his experience, there are moments where you, an officer's left going, really, this is where my job is for a day. Mm -hmm. So, yes, in one particular incident, and they're not, when you see the four emergency detentions, it's not two hours, one officer, and we're done. Um, in this particular case, started at 10 a.m. on 10.20 on one shift, second shift picked it up, ran with it, did the transport, and almost till 9 o'clock in the evening. Well, I appreciated you including that in there because that's what I thought it represented, because it kind of shocked me. I would have expected through the night on a time hour, because this is daytime, which when this, your staff is being stressed the most, most things are going on. And here comes this stuff at the same time. I would not have figured that. So I thank you for that information. You are welcome. And, and all I would add is, again, even though we talk about EMS and the <coughs> physical part of it, they're also dealing with the mental health. And and again, it's we're all carrying part of it. So thank you. Chief, would you update the commission on the status of adding an additional drug officer in 2018? The, we did make the request and the city council did approve it, again based on uh, the contingencies or the expectations. We are still seeking the, um, it's called the COPS grant, but effectively it's through Homeland Security now, but seeking that and as long as we get that and align everything up, uh, that should happen. We will not know that until, unfortunately, the end of this month. Um, the operational budget isn't gone through until November, I believe. Capital is taken care of in October. Mm -hmm. So we're still waiting to hear from state slash federal and in that holding pattern, unfortunately, like many other law enforcement. Okay. That's a three-year grant, correct? That would be a three-year grant, mm -hmm. correct. Other questions from the commissioners for our police chief? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Mary. I just want to make a comment. Um, Alder McComb and Alder Johnson and I took advantage of the opportunity to sit in on the below 100 and the Alzheimer's training that the police department first responders did, and it was phenomenal. Appreciate it uh, that you include us. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to approve. I so move. Second. second. Commissioner Kirkland, with the second. All in favor of accepting the chief's report is submitted. Please say aye. 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 Those say no. Motion carries. Item 10 is to adjourn in the closed session. I'll make a motion. Let me read it here. Pursuant to Wisconsin statute section 1985, 1E, deliberating or negotiating, the purchase of public properties, the investing of public fund, 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 investing.